started now? I think now is as good a time as any to get started. All right. So welcome. Uh, good morning. And uh, good afternoon to Lars, because it's about 4 p.m. where Lars is over in Sweden right now. But uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to the first in the Changing Minds webinar series. So thank you for joining us in uh, this first of many. My name is Derek Lano. I'm the uh, Vice President of Mining here at PACE, and I will be your host for today's webinar. Um, thank you all for attending. And as I mentioned before, and for anyone who just joined us, uh, as we go through the webinar today, we will be taking questions by using the chat function. So if you wanna just go into your chat window and ask a question, um, I will be uh, pulling the questions and, and asking Lars questions as we go throughout the presentation. And uh, any we can't get to, we'll try to get to at the end of, the, uh, of his presentation. We'll have some time for questions, hopefully at the end as well. So with that, I would like to uh, introduce today's webinar. Um, the topic for today's presentation is short interval control at Boleden Mines. And uh, I have the pleasure today to introduce uh, a colleague and someone who's uh, become a friend, uh, Mr. Lars Erickson, head of the production management program at Boleden. Um, so welcome, Lars. Thank you, thank you. All right, so I, uh, Back in the fall, uh, early winter, I had an opportunity to visit Shaleftio and uh, tour Boliden's Renstrom mine. And I saw a lot of really interesting things that Boliden was doing. I'd heard about uh, some of those prior, but uh, got to see firsthand some of the uh, really interesting things that uh, Boliden was doing uh, over in, in Sweden and, and at some of their other operations. And uh, I thought it would be a great opportunity um, for our first uh, Changing Minds webinar series to get Lars to come and uh, talk a little bit about uh, all the cool things that him and his team are doing over there at Boleden. So with that, Lars, I'll uh, hand it off to you and uh, you can take control. Okay, thank you, Derek, for this excellent uh, presentation of myself, a little bit what we do, do at Boleden and so forth. Uh, this is, will be my first uh, webinar ever, so it's a bit exciting. So I uh, thank you everyone for attending it and uh, let's see where we go with it. Uh, I will try to talk about the uh, Boolean's journey when it comes to short interval control, what we have done and where perhaps we had are heading. And uh, I look forward to all your questions and your ideas because I want to also try to learn something about perhaps your experiences and stuff like that. So, so bring it on, I say. Uh, as the title says, I'm head of the production management program here in, in Boliden, and that's actually a research program for, for improving our production capability. And it's uh, situated with our automation program, how to automate and how to you know, improve our production capability. So it's a, a program that has been running for quite a few years and uh, it has been very exciting. I joined this team last year. And uh, before this, I have been working with Boolean with our lean program and change management program running uh, several of these at uh, our mine sites, which has been very exciting. Uh, before this, I have been uh, in many different uh, branches, for instance, um, ABB for a couple of years and automotive industry for quite a few years. So I have a lot of background from production and uh, product um, product management before this joining all in then. So it's a bit uh, about my background. Uh, so uh, we spoke earlier about uh, something cool that I do and I actually am an extreme uh, snowmobile guy like driving in uh, deep powder and i think that's something many of you from your area like too as far as i understand from derek and the people that suffer yes. and canada is a lot for that and i run polaris no while so hope you like that <laughs> anyways <laughs> let's get into the to the story and uh, give uh, derek all your questions let's see if this works Have you given me the control? Uh, 
We try it. If not, try it out again, uh, Lars. The next page. Try it again, Lars. Okay. Okay. I'll uh, I'll take control for you. Yeah, that's perfect. You can run this. Anyways, I thought I uh, at least tell something about Bull Eden. It's uh, it's not such a big mining company when you compare to big giants in the world. But uh, anyways, we are our mines are from North Finland in Kavitsa all the way to south of uh, Intara Island. So we have a lot of um, uh, mines in this area and a lot of uh, uh, field exploration going on in this area. Uh, we have quite a few smelters situated from Norway, Fil uh, Sweden to Finland. And then we have some sales office in, in Europe. Then. And uh, I think uh, the last figure I saw, we are roughly 5,500 5, employees totally. So that's uh, a little bit short about Bolin. And if, as you can see, um, the main uh, metals that we are going for are zinc and copper. And then we have some precious metals as well. So then you know a little, little bit about. Uh, what we do in Bolin when it comes to our business. So you can change the slide from, from that, I think. I thought also I would try to give you some, since we're going to talk about uh, short interval control, I will try to give you some um, a short history of what has been done within Bolin from the beginning of 2000 to today. So I just listed some of the milestones that we did. So it has been quite a long journey, but it started somewhere in 2003 that we decided to, we need to start to understand what is happening daily in our production. So we started up quite easy, just using paper, noting, you know, start stop and try to just bring on the date what is happening and then it went uh, some years we did some thinking and then we uh, implemented the first software to actually plan execute and uh, collect data from our production and that's the Gantt scheduling and you think you see uh, the picture in the mid part of this uh, screen now for that one. And uh, we continued to think about this for a few years. And then we decided, okay, we will try to implement this in three of our mines. And that was Kristnerberg mine and Reinster mine, which you visited, Derek, and also Garpenberg. And after this, all, some years later, Tara mine also joined into this one. And I um, mean, then it was operators trying to work this short term planning and, um, and uh, collecting data. Then, somewhere in 2014, we changed the uh, organization and, uh, and, and uh, in, made it a bit uh, stronger. We put in a short term manager and a weekly planner to focus more on, on addressing planning and execution within Board Eden. And uh, some more mines has uh, now adapted to that. But we have also uh, put in something else. Uh, I'm not sure if any of you guys have done this also, but uh, we have tried to use a daily pulse meeting. And that's uh, been used quite a lot in the normal production industry. And uh, I think mainly for, from 2015 from today it has been a the biggest focus on that. We started actually 2013-14 with like a pilot in our big ITIC mine, but um, now the last couple of years, a lot of focus on this daily pulse meeting for having the short interval control. And you can see just on the on the small picture here, just from one, one of our mines, uh, an example where people are addressing today's main topics but we will look into those more in detail but that has been the journey Lars. from 2003 to now yeah, yeah. yeah Lars, we have one uh, one question from Sudbury um just about yeah. the paper-based um 
short interval control. What type of information were you were you getting there, and who was filling out that information? What kind of frequency? Yeah, it was before my time, but uh, I spoke with Arne Reinström, who has been uh, around quite a long time with him, Bo Lida, and they sat down from our tech department and worked with one mine, that was a Galpenberg mine, and they collected, as far as I know, the, the data start and stop data and uh, some, you know, how many balls and things, trying to collect and understand what is actually happening before they went into the software. And I think that's a good way to start off quite easy and then perhaps see if software and technology can help you. So, so that's what, how we started. That's great. I have some questions too about your uh, pulse meetings, but I, I know you're gonna talk a little bit more about that a little bit later. So maybe we'll hold off on that for now. Yeah, but keep it and remember it. Uh, I'm very interested in, in those actually, so yeah. Sure. Okay. So we're going to jump into a quick, uh, quick poll here. I know this was something that Lars was interested in, and we are as well. Um, and the question is, what is your experience with short interval or real time control? So those of you who are, uh, are using it, thinking about it, or have no uh, experience with it at all, I'd like to get a little bit of uh, information from you. So if you can click on your poll, answer the question, and we'll uh, We'll get back to the presentation shortly. We've got, let me see. Uh, we've got a good percentage voted already here. So we have, uh, we have about 20% or so that are saying that they, they are currently using some form of short interval control. 50% um, are thinking about using it. That's what I was kind of suspecting. I, from what I've seen uh, around everybody, most people who aren't using it are certainly thinking about it. And uh, there's about 31% that have, have no experience currently with short interval control. Okay, so that's good to know. So we'll jump back into uh, to your presentation there, Lars, and I'll try giving you control one more time. Okay, let's try. Tell me one. <laughs> okay, that should be uh, over to you now, Lars. Okay, uh, I will give it a try. Yes, I thought I will give you a glance of how it looks today with our short interval control. Uh, this is from the Reinstrom mine. It, this was the one you visited, Derek. Yeah. And here they control actually the complete mine. Uh, they have cameras on from different parts. You can see on the let's see if I can yeah, control it here. They can see observe different parts of the, the mine. Uh, they have the mobile system where they can observe um, all the parts of the mine where vehicles are and people are and so forth. And have the, the Gantt uh, scheduling program. And this is difficult to see, but it's the ABB 800XA which runs uh, our hoist and, and things like that. Uh, so they can track and, and monitor. And what they do here is that they, they control the weekly plan, the coordinated activity plan for the week for production, mining infrastructure and maintenance. They focus a lot of their work on trying to optimize the production today, reporting a lot of uh, activities and disturbances. And that takes at the moment quite a long time. So uh, they don't have, I think that they're struggling with having time to optimize and reporting uh, activities and disturbances. But they also have a very important function when it comes to emerging situations because they are the eyes of the mind when something happens and they coordinate a lot of activities. And uh, well, we have had some issues with fires in, uh, in our minds, but uh, this has really helped us when those 
accidents has occurred. So it's been very helpful when they've been using the mobile system to track people. And if they are in the uh, emergency chambers that are situated over, all over the mine. So, so it has been really good. So that they focus on that. And um, I will just show you some of the tools on the next. Let's see if it works now. Yeah, great. Oh, I went one too far. Oh. There we go. Yeah, perfect. So uh, and this is the basic tools and it's a difficult now on webinars to show, but here is each uh, blast cycle containing the, these different small colors are different uh, activities, drilling, uh, hauling and um, bolting and so forth within the, the, the blast cycle. And then try then to, for every uh, phase that we have, try to optimize machines and personnel so we get the most out of the mine. And there are different windows that I can see, um, for instance, the, how the activities match together. And there on the bottom here, they show how each machine are occupied to yeah, try to optimize the schedule. And then we have this mobilized positioning service where we can see where are our machines, where are our people. Uh, within the different mines, this is used lit, well, with a bit of variations. Uh, Gap and by mine, they have two uh, operators in the MOC and Rensum has one. And for, so it's local variations, but the main principle is that they try to work with the GAN schedule and the mobile system and try then to optimize our production cycle. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it has been contributed to a, a lot of production effectiveness for Bodin since we started to use it. It's been really great. Uh, if we then go to the next slide, uh, it's uh, for the concentrators. Uh, it's a bit different here. The focus is on uh, optimizing today's production at the concentrator, reporting as uh, the, the activity and disturbances within the, the production and uh, process monitoring. So this is from our ITIC mine uh, far up in the north. Mm. So it, it's kind of a cool place, really nice, works excellent. Great. And uh, let's see. So this is a bit about today. Uh, I will show you some pictures also later on, on the, about the pulse meetings, but uh, I will get into that later. I thought instead we would talk about why are we using short interval control. And I think we've got okay, a quick poll there here. first, Lars. Um, yeah. And, and, and I have a question for you right after, but we're going to open up the poll here and, and get, because we've heard some variation um, around what people consider short interval control when it comes to underground mining. So I'd like to, to get yeah, some. This is interesting. Some votes from the audience as to what people consider short interval. We've got a uh, number of votes coming in. All right. Looks like nobody considers once a shift uh, short interval. So that's good. It's something shorter than once a shift. So we've got. Uh, Let's just see the results there. Okay, so it looks like real time is the is the winner. So that's uh, on a on a real time basis. Uh, three to four times per shift is uh, thirty three percent of you think three to four times a shift is is uh, sufficient for short interval within the mining uh, underground mining framework, and every half hour is another. Uh, uh, popular vote. So I, I know there's a lot of different um, perceptions around short interval, in when, especially when it comes to mining. One of the things, Lars, that I, w I wanted to ask you about when you're showing your Gantt scheduler and your your um, operations control center um, and your your operators at your MOC, um, what I noticed there was they were getting uh, radio calls in on a on an almost constant basis. And updating that Gantt schedule um, on a pretty uh, pretty real time basis, from what I saw. 
Yeah, that's correct. That is a kind of a tough job. They uh, handle uh, all the reporting, planning. Uh, they also handle a lot of people coming and asking them questions because they are like the center of the mind. So they know pretty much what's happening. So they have a lot of disturbances that they need to focus not just trying to optimize the mine production. So they, and I will, I will come into that when it comes to our roadmap because we, we want to change that. Could Great. you put up the, the poll results, by the way? I just want to comment them. Could you put up them again? Yes, we can. I just thought I could say that uh, Boliden, we are, I think we are using once per shift, uh, a couple of times per shift and real time. So we're working all these areas. Mm -hmm. And that's you know, that's something I find um, interesting. I will discuss that later in this uh, presentation, why we do it. So um, let's see what you think about that and your comments. It will be interesting. Okay. So we're using Great. the whole spectrum almost. I think you have uh, control there, Lars, if you want to jump to your next slide. Yeah, I can't see the slide, however. Can you? Do you see it now? Uh, no. OK, we must be still showing the. Uh... But now I see something great. Now, perfect. Yeah, I, I thought I we had a discussion of, on the global mining standard group why we used the uh, short interval control on the like the business case, and I I think on logic we use it. Uh, we try to explain how we think about it because uh, oh, I have a like this uh, storytelling about why. And I will change slides. Let's, let's see, that works perfect. Uh, let's assume that we are sailing towards an island and uh, we expect the journey to take four days. So, what happens if the captain checks the location after four days and do the necessary corrections? Well, there is a high risk that we need, we have lost one or two or three days, who knows? We could be lucky to be spot on too, but the risk is that we are lost quite a lot. So let's say we, we check the location on a daily basis. Well, the necessary corrections are done then on a daily basis and the deviation will be much smaller. And of course, the next, if we check every 30 minutes, well, the necessary corrections are done all the time. So most likely we are there on time. So, I mean, the reason for us to, I mean, do the short interval control is to make sure that we are on plan. So we deliver what we have promised, but it's also, we know also, of course, that um, when it comes to planning and uh, the reality, there are always deviations. And by having short interval control and comparing how we are progressing compared to our plan, we always find deviation. And from the deviations, we can learn where we have our, uh, where our problems and our challenges. And then we can address them with improvement work. So that is very important for us to note all the deviations. And we need to have a plan to know, notice when we have a deviation. So this is why we do the short interval control and have yeah, expanded it from 2003 until now. So by logic, it's a good thing to do. We can get on time and we can improve where we have navigated incorrectly. So uh, I think it's really, really important. And it's uh, really important, uh, I think, from our uh, Lena Devrel, he has put out that this is really important for whole of pool Eden to implement. So we are doing our best. Let's see if we can change page now to the next. So now we talk about uh, how for us to be able to 
install short interval control, we need something before. And we need some, you know, a clear direction where do we want to go. So planning is key. And we also need to have some sort of a method, a system to make sure that we do the plan and can check that we are following the plan and note the deviations. So these are really important things to achieve as we see it, at least short interval control. And um, we've been working with this, of course, then quite a lot to achieve it. And it has been a kind of tough road to really achieve it, but um, it has been fairly successful, I think. You can be the judge of that from what you saw, Derek, of course. Uh, and I think uh, one important thing, and it doesn't matter if it's in a control room or it is on a daily pulse board, the, the visualization is very important because you can have a lot of data but still no information. So having making information out of data is important and you can just glance something and understand the situation is really, is really important. So visualization is something that we work quite hard on. So um, th th I think it's a, a thing to point out anyways. Uh, yeah, and Lars, your, your mobile earth system must, uh, must add to that visualization too. I, I've seen that knowing where everything is. Um, how does that, uh, does, has you, have you found your mobile air system, your asset tracking or, or people tracking system has added to your productivity as well and, and efficiencies? Yeah, I think so. Now we can, we can use it quite a lot. I mean, first of all, we know where just the basic, where are a car when we need just that car or that mm. machine. We can see where it's parked actually. Just, just that removes a lot of uh, waiting time to just finding your stuff. Uh, but of course, it also gives you other things. Uh, it can actually help us track the transport time from one location to another location, perhaps to decide which vehicle to take to which uh, phase. So it has been really helpful. And of, of course, the most important thing is from the safety point of view, when something happens, we know where people are. Right. And that's really, really important. That's great. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, so moving on, uh, uh, I thought uh, talking a little bit about how we do this uh, and uh, and how we achieved it so far. And if it has not been easy, it's been a lot of hard work. And uh, I think the first thing that we have done quite a lot, you know, I said plan and is the key. We need to know where we're going. So we need to map and understand how the daily operation match our business goals, because then we know what we need to check on a short interval control. And there were questions at the beginning, what we checked on paper. First, we need to understand what do we need to observe and measure and verify. So we need to do this mapping and it's take a lot of effort to really understand because there are a lot of opinions but we need to find the real ones, the real important things. And we also need to try to analyze, well, there are also always some sort of a planning taking place in the mind, but we need to analyze and improve that. So the plan that we are using on a daily basis really coordinate the business. So we have something to set up the short interval control because we need to check one plan and make sure that we can achieve that plan and understands the deviation to that plan. So a lot, lot of work goes in to analyze the planning processes and, and perhaps improving it slightly. And then we have, uh, we need to build an arena. I usually call it an arena for decision making because when you build a plan, we must make sure that all the different departments within Bull Eden, for instance, that they are uh, sitting down and agreeing on, on one plan. If we have, I will show you a slide later on how we do it, but there are decision 
to to uh, to take the long term plan looks like this the short term plan will look like this to achieve the long term plan so we need to build that uh, arena and that's usually meetings let's see if i get the next Yeah, and let's implement the, the meetings that, to follow up the plan and act on, on the deviations. And if, if I want to give you some advice, uh, it will be that uh, try to make sure that we solve the real problems so, so that people within the organization feel are the problems. So therefore, we always work with the personnel involved so to understand, understand why we do it, and also how we do it, because when they are in, involved, they are building the methods and the meeting procedures and agree on when the meeting should be. So all the basic, you know, selling in the concepts is done by working with the personnel. Uh, one thing I could recommend to, to look on uh, Google actually is uh, this uh, yes, Google the Golden Circle by Simon Sinek. You can find him on YouTube. And he, he speaks quite a lot about why why is important for people. If they understand why, they're very likely to follow you. If they don't understand why we're doing certain things, then it's just a management tool, and they don't give a care about it. So yeah. that's a, an, a, I would recommend it to 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 see that. But anyways, solve real problems, make sure you have the personnel with you when you try to develop your short interval control. That's a, a recommendation from our point, a learning. We um, has not always done that and we had to redo it. Absolutely. Lars, did you, we just had a comment come yeah. up, but I, I'm going to turn it into a yeah. question. Do you find that having your continuous improvement culture already in place helped you um helped you go into this short interval control yes yeah, so i would i would ask i'll answer this like this i'm not sure if we have the continuous improvement in in, uh, in all and everyone but it's getting there okay. but when we have had this uh, programs running to develop this that it has been a lot of improvements going on and everyone has been very involved and, and have had actually a lot of fun trying to deal with real problems and solving them and it has been a, a very good foundation for getting to continuous improvements because they, under, they understood that they can be involved and their ideas they make a, a difference that's great i'm not sure if that's an, an answer to it but mm. Yeah, I know it, uh, it It helps sort of paint the picture, but yeah, understanding the problem you're trying to solve and making sure everyone's involved, I think is is very important. And these are things that I've seen as well in, in other places that that uh, have tried to implement short interval control. That's great, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a bit boring slides, but I thought they were important anyways, just to give, give a, a feeling for how we've done it and, and the journey. Uh, we have something called milestone plans. And the, the first like half year, we work quite a lot about understanding the business, the challenges, the current status, mm -hmm. and trying to come up with ideas how to, uh, how to use short interval control to fix the problems. And then we, do some a lot of install it's like uh, fixing different uh, tools different planning uh, mechanisms and methods and things like that mm -hmm. and this first half year is really for us work intensive but the whole organization are involved doing this so we are helping each other to develop all the methods and ideas and so but the most important is that we we spend the next half year just training to do what we agreed i mean it's like whatever sport you do you need to train to be good at it so you can't just do it once and then leave so we put lot of focus on training 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 and uh, i think then it's also sustainable afterwards 
So after a year, this usually is, is very sustainable with, within the mine site. And what I could explain is that the whole Eden is organized so that we have a, a technical staff that helps all our mining areas. So we go out and support them to do this journey. Mm -hmm. So we spend half a year developing the methods, half the year training to sustainable and getting the results we want. And then they continue on themselves. So that's how we do it. So usually a program like this, it runs for like a year or something. So it's, um, it's a quite a long journey, but been quite successful building short interval control, building coordinated planning to support a coordinate uh, to support a short interval control. And I will so show you on next. I think um, I mean first of all, I think the program's been running. It's uh, been in. We have been working at all mining sites, more or less doing this. And I mean it has been. Rather good has been improvement for each uh, program we have been running. So it has been a, a lot of fun and good results as well. So it has been a very exciting journey. But I, I thought I, I will show you the next slide. I think it's more. Uh, I showed that this one in Toronto when I was there for last year. And what we actually do is that um, I start up here with my pointer that. Uh, we actually start with the business plan. What is important for this mine site? And I mean, that this is planning, getting the planning down to short interval control. So you get the budget, everyone has one, nothing strange about that. But we're trying to make sure that we break down the plan from you know the, these big numbers and not just divide it by 12 so we get the months and then by 30 to get the days. We look on the tons and the you know the uh, the metal content, but we also look on okay, but what resources will execute this plan? So then we get into the maintenance plan, the yearly maintenance plan for the entire business. Then we go down. To, we understand that the, the yearly plan most likely will not be, I mean, staying put as it is. It will have some changes. We will have some. Uh, uh, breaking down issues and things like that. So we need to then address uh, and then um, do a more detailed plan. And we have usually a three months rolling plan for maintenance. And that's an input to the production plan because then we stand, these are our plan stops. So then we can agree on the next three months will look like this. And then we can always check does it match the budget target? Well, yes. Otherwise, there's the, you could say the first short interval control on a three months basis. Verify, does it match the plan or not? Otherwise, you need to do some uh, change, some sort of decision to try to back, get back on track. Then we usually go down to almost here and now. We are on a five week schedule. And we meet every fifth week to verify that, okay, how does the maintenance plan look like? Is there any changes? Usually they are. And I guess you guys have the same problem there. We need to update the production plan. Okay, does it match the three month plan? If it does, okay, great. If it doesn't, what do we need to do? Can we? How does it look the next week if this week is bad? And we try to do some fixing and uh, some smart uh, decisions. But then we go down to each day. We look on, okay, how does it look the next 48 hours? Because in Boolean, at least, usually something happens in between the weekly plan and <laughs> the 48 hour plan. So then we check. And here, this is where the pulse meeting they try to make sure that we can fix the 48 hour plan. And if that runs well to the five week plan, to a three months plan, it's okay. But there are a lot of deviations and we try to learn from each of these. And uh, the past meetings is actually where you get to know your production. You understand on a daily basis what is happening where are our usual problems? Can we address them? Can we improve them? Improve on them? Which actions do we need to take? So 
I think for us, short interval control, we learn a lot of what is happening every single day of the year. And then you can, you know, add up all the information and get to a weekly production report and to monthly production report. But you understand then what you need to, to improve to improve your business. So, and this is a lot of work, but it's uh, as giving a good uh, result doing it. Great. Handing in to, uh, I think, uh, the, how we do then the, the daily pulse meeting, which are this small thing down at the bottom of the page. Let's see if we can change the picture. Yeah. This is our daily control structure, our pulse meetings. And we start when the shift starts in the morning. Let's see if we can get this up. Yeah. So when the shift comes in the morning, they discuss, okay, how does the plan look for this shift? Okay, great. Then they go out trying to do the work. When they stop their shift, they report back what happened, which deviations do we have? What can we do about them? And so forth. And then in the, in the next shift comes in the afternoon they take over and uh, and understand okay this is current status they can have been given some heads up you must check on this you must check on this this uh, vehicle uh, we have some problems but uh, and so forth so it's a continuous um, method of, of uh, communicating taking actions and moving forward so that's on, on the shift basis then the that's in between the shift bosses and the operators then all the shift bosses, they meet a quarter afterwards and coordinate their actions because they're moving, working in different parts of the mines. So they then coordinate all their actions and making sure that somebody takes uh, the lead on, on different challenges. And they go out. And then it continues with the section managers and some of the also shift bosses. Then they discuss, okay, what is happening? What is the challenges for us? And then continue to the next level, which is the management team. Mm. So this is how we roll it day in and day out at the mines where we install the pulse meetings. And so far it has been a very strong tool for, for us because what is happening for us is uh, we have the pulse meeting ship for the shift they report to the next level report to the next level and every time we can actually uh, what do you call it we could um, in english on it we can escalate issues and get support back and this is very important so if one shift notice that we have a problem they can escalate it to them their manager and within an hour or so get the support to fix the problem during this time we have the people within the moc who is working on near time short interval control so the whole organization is involved in short interval control once to twice a day and then we have the guys in the MOC, the Mine Operation Center, they work in real time. So we have the whole mix, as I said, when I wanted to comment on the poll. And mm -hmm. it has been so far, I think, it has done bullied and a lot of good things so far. So I think uh, this is some, a route we will continue to develop and try to implement at all our mine sites. That's great. And as I said, there are always some sort of deviation and we can handle it by just an action directly. It could lead to some sort of a manage or root cause improvement work with some group to try to find a way to solve it on a long-term basis. There may be a need to escalate the question because on a shift basis or a section basis, then may not have the authority or 
they need to escalate it since it uh, it means that they need to cooperate with more dimensions within the mind so mm. it's a really strong tool to do this every day at the same time making sure that everyone knows how to address the issues because mm. if we don't do it like this then as, as we have figured out and learned then people will call they will meet in corridors and taking decisions that could be proactive well, not proactive they could be the opposite they could be uh, what do you call it in english um, i mean what is good in one area could be really bad in another area mm -hmm. so that's great lars i've got a couple of questions coming in um yeah. the first one with regards to the pulse structure do, do you uh the question is do you have support to cover a true 24 7 operation for the pulse structure is that happening on on all shifts or or just day shifts uh usually on in our underground mines uh they uh, have these two shifts so the the shifts are running as i described uh, uh four times a day each shift two times and it's two shifts so it's four times a day and the managers they just do the pulse once a day because they are just involved once a day so right. that's why it differs slightly yeah and there are some uh, variation but, but uh, if we are in uh, i think mine they just do it once a shift even for the shifts mm -hmm. so it's just once and so we're trying to figure out still which is the best and what is also possible for the for uh, their yeah, uh, shift structures, how, how often can we meet? But I would say more often is better than seldom. <laughs> I don't know how to say, but the, the more often you can do it, the better it is. Okay. Um, the other question I had was just around uh, where these pulse meetings take place. Uh, are they underground and are, are the shift bosses underground during these meetings? Uh, at the moment, they are not underground. They are where people come in before they go down in okay. the elevators down into the mine. Uh, one thing we try to do, as I mentioned with the visualization, is that they are situated where people walk by all the time. So everyone can pass these uh, boards and understand the current situation. That's what we aim for. It's not always possible. But we try to aim that everyone can see it, it's accessible. And uh, yeah, yeah. OK, great. And one more question just around the uh, the control center operators. Um, what uh, what type of what type of people do you have in these positions? Uh, what's the kind of profile for these people? Are they are they mine ship bosses? Are they miners? Are they uh, some other sort of uh, background? Uh, at the moment, I can say it's a, a variation. It's moving towards that we have shift bosses and, and, and that type of experienced personnel to be operators. At the beginning, we didn't know exactly which profiles we needed to have. So then we had a, a, quite a big variation about skills and experience. But I think we're moving more and more to the, this is a high profile job. I mean, what they do make a big difference for the production output of the mine. So skilled and experienced person which understand mine production are important here. Okay, great. I'll let you get back to the presentation. Yeah, thank you. So this is um, uh, how it looks today. And, and, and as I said, uh, there's a lot of variation between our mine site, but uh, we are moving that uh, I think in a few years, all our mine site will have this pulse meeting structure. I think this with the coordinated planning uh, will, uh, I think every mine site will go towards that also that they work a lot more with the coordinated planning. But we, we also then see that uh, there are some things that we, we need to do for the future to develop and I will get into roadmap. Let's see if it changes. Yeah, thanks. I mean, we have looked into um, a roadmap for a future to improve on our capability for short interval control. And as I mentioned, 
my responsibility is to develop this. So it's a research area. What we are, what we are looking on is to try to minimize the, the, the workload of the people sitting in the mine operation center. So they can focus actually on optimizing production on a near, uh, near time basis. So they can do it within 10, 15 minutes from, from something occurring. And what we then need to do is first of all, let's see if this works. It's a, a bit of travel time from Sweden to Canada <laughs> and the controls. Yeah, the first thing we're looking on is reduce the administrative labor on reporting and planning for the people within the MOC. So we're looking on apps to in, uh, helping on uh, reporting back, starting, stopping disturbances. So the people in the MOC doesn't have to sit with the keyboards typing everything for, for everyone. It takes, I mean, 50 to 70% of their work today. The next step is combining apps with automated reporting. And we are trying different uh, solutions for it uh, as we speak. So we are, we are in, the apps we have some and the automated reporting, we are, we are close to have it on, on some, some parts of our, our activities. And that, of course, will reduce a lot of work. But then also, we are looking into this. If you have like uh, 60 faces for Garpen by mine or whatever, manually planning all these and getting, getting everything right, transport time, getting the, the sequences right, that's a real challenge. So we're working quite a lot with the device we call Auto Scheduler. And we tested the first uh, prototype at the end of 2017. Mm -hmm. It worked um, at least uh, as good as an operator today. And it was just um, a test prototype, not really easy to handle, you know, with the, all the data. And it's an algorithm that helps us uh, to schedule. Right. We're working on a research program and hopefully somewhere 1920, we will have an auto scheduler in production. And what happens then is that the, the person sitting in the MLC will have a completely different role, or at least a possibility. They can actually work much more proactive, looking on, on figures, numbers, and whatever to understand which decision should I take now to make sure that the, this daily plan fits together at the end of the day so we can meet our target. Also perhaps looking to what are the deviations, trying to work with those things. So that's a really important one. Right. To support that, we will work with the business intelligence support. And uh, since we are pumping in a lot of data into our databases, we need to uh, do some something with that so it gives information or decision support so and here's just like an example how we we can very easily look on a week or or, or a special phase to understand how what, what's the lead time what's the cycle time for for the entire blast for a machine within the blast this is still in prototyping but we need to make sure that this is available within the moc it must also be available for managers on the cell phones, on the computer screens, on the walls, so people can observe where we are have potential problems. And I'm not sure if some of you have been in an automotive factory or, or some kind, but there you can see all the time screens. You have where current status, where we need to be, current tact information like this and as we see it we need to get there within our mining production as well so we put in a lot of effort here Great. the next thing we are looking into that which are a bit more fussy i think but extremely important 
that is something we call fear of constraint or bottleneck optimization and i mean i'm, I'm not sure if any of you guys has have any experience if so it would be very interesting to talk to you about it but we know if we have a bottleneck we will never produce over time more than the, its capacity so we want to make sure that at least the bottleneck always can be running at at its highest capacity or as close to it as possible because then we get the maximum output of the entire production system nice theory difficult to do but we are putting in a lot of effort so we are working on a on a pilot within one of our minds to try to develop it and do a lot of research how to do this so it's a big focus area uh, also i think uh, in my beginning of the presentation i spoke about uh, we wanted to achieve continuous improvements and we will continue to work a lot with our daily pulse meetings because they get the plan, they do the plan, they check it, they get deviations. And we need to get this uh, improvement engine working because if we can fix one improvement each day or each week anyways, that's quite a lot for an entire year and it will make a difference. We can't act on every deviation because there are so many, but perhaps with the, the right focus and with the, the right the KPIs and, and so forth, we perhaps can focus our improvement work on the deviation that makes uh, the most value. And going back one slide, I think, or I uh, think the other way around too, I think this slide. Sorry, it's a lot of extra. With TUC, we know if we can optimize the deviations around our bottleneck, then we will have the, the quickest return for our investment. So that's the, the basic what we're trying to achieve. Great. Yeah. And we will also work, I mean, all these will add up to create trans, a transparent mine and with business intelligence and uh, the right planning tools and things like that it, it, we must make it easy to take the right decision in for our mining guys so that's where we're heading great Lars I have so a I question here. sorry yep. I just I just have a question around um, so you know the, the comment was that you say it was a lot of hard work but how are you measuring the success of the different systems that you're implementing for instance uh, the coordinated planning or could you yeah all of it do you have a mechanism for uh for measuring what the what the impact has been of putting some of these different things in place whether it's the pulse meetings or the the real-time communication from from the front line oh, right. yeah um, we'll revert back some slides let's see easier to explain hopefully just give me some seconds i will try to <laughs> yeah here yeah this is actually measuring our success with this is our management system and that's the meeting structure where we very full, we, we do the plans and we are make sure we have the right people involved with doing the plans. But on this side, I mean, we follow up how it went very thoroughly. So mm -hmm. we, by doing that, we observe how good we are on keeping our plans, how our success rate. So we continuously try to analyze how well did we do last day last week last month and since we have the daily pulse meetings and we note all the deviations that we have there it's much easier to explain why we lost or gain a certain amount of tons that week or the other week because then people remember and we have noted what really happened 
if we don't do it like this and uh, one manager asks us uh, okay we lost this amount of ton this month what happened and then people try to remember and then uh, i usually talk then we use the book of excuses take something random mm. but with this system with the short interval control people actually know what has been happening and can figure out the right actions great So basically, it's it's the ability to effectively predict and then explain the deviations and then correct those deviations as you go forward. So that's fantastic. Yeah. Of course, right. over such a presentation, it's difficult to explain every piece of it. But uh, yes. this is the basic. You need we need to have the, our target, our plan to get there, and uh, following it on a daily basis, both with these pulse meetings and also with uh, our MOC where we have the GAN scheduling and where we feed our databases with all the production information and can analyze it. So those mm -hmm. working together is, I think, at least our way forward. Yeah, for sure. Can we, uh, you can jump back to the presentation. I don't think you were quite finished there, Lars. I didn't want to cut you off. Nope, no, no, it's good to, to uh, go back and want to, to discuss those issues because it's interesting. Let's see where we were. <laughs> right around there. I mean, the, the basic thing is that we, we are trying to get all these things working together. We have the pulse meetings and we, since our minds usually are not that transparent, we need to use the technology to uh, to see different parts of the minds, making all the information visible so we can take actions on them. We have the mobilar system, we have different uh, things that we are working on to, to visualize the mind. Uh, we need to follow up uh, the plan that we have set and work with the improvements. So, I mean, that's, I think, our way forward. And uh, that's basically it, I think, from that point of view. So, yeah, pretty much. Well, that's fantastic, Lars. I, uh, I do have a, a couple questions here that uh, I appreciate uh, the presentation, but a couple questions that have come up. There was one question uh, by Michael. He asked, um, in your efforts to decrease variation, in task and process, are you, are you using automation or have you discussed automation as a strategy to reduce variation? Yeah, I think uh, we in our automation program, we have, uh, we have we are of course working with automated machines and also what I mentioned with um, auto scheduling. And, and of course, we think that it will help reducing disturbances by us using automation so uh, for instance we go if we go from from my point of view the auto scheduling uh, i mean every person within the mind perhaps do their tweaks to their planning on a short term basic but an optimization program we do the same each time so at least if it does it incorrectly each time we can understand that and do a fix and then improve on that so it makes it of course easier but also the amount of information to handle to get a good plan it will be easier for a program to take into account those and calculate and give you a suggestion so yeah that's great and another question here, which I can probably answer, but I won't. They were curious if uh, if you had if Boliden had written a white paper on short interval control design and implementation, like uh, um, a method or, or standardized operating procedure, how to achieve it. Yeah, or just a white paper on your experience and that kind of thing. Uh, I know your part uh, as yeah. my the GMSG uh, short interval control guideline writing so i know that's uh, how you're trying to to give back at least to a certain extent 
Yeah, I mean, from each uh, project we have done, we have done a technical report on this, even though it's not like technical, but we have written a report of, of every finding and every observation we have, and then building it to the next time we do it. Because every time we do it, we, we realize that we could do it in another way to get the better results. So it's a continuous learning how to improve uh, improve on on the daily pulse meeting and short interval control. As I mentioned, the first time we did it was in Bodid, and I think it was, uh, the first perhaps tries was 2010, very basic, but the real one I think was 2013 at the Aetic mine. Yeah. And then we did it 2015, and now we do it in on the whole Bodid area. So, and now I think it, we're more refined how to do it for sure. That's fantastic. I don't have anything to share on today, but uh, yes, we have. Okay, no, that's fantastic. Um, I have a few people asking of uh, about about getting a copy of your PowerPoint presentation, so I'll I'll uh, try to make that uh, available if that's yeah, okay. I'm happy with to that. share it. Yes, I'm happy to share it, and uh, I mean. Uh, yeah, just to send an email if there are questions, we will try. We'll try to answer it for sure. I mean, it's it's good to um, to have somebody with that tries different things and learn from what they've done. We can learn from from each other. I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I wanted to also just mention that we will be um, we have recorded this uh, this webcast, so um, we will be able to provide the link to that as well uh, to those who have viewed the webcast and those who have not been able to view the webcast as well. Yep. Okay, great. Um, thank you very much, Lars. I know it's uh, it's late in the day for you. You've already had a full day, and you came to uh, to join uh, join us uh, at the end of your day. Um, and uh, and so we very much appreciate that. And I, I know you're a very busy man. You've got a lot on the go over there, as we've discussed. Um, so I appreciate the time that you've given us today. Oh, no problem. It has been fun, and it's also you know, sitting down to try to do a presentation. It's a difficult topic to present like this, but it has been a lot of fun, and I I hope it has been uh, useful and uh, for all you guys that have been listening. So, thank you for the opportunity. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It's uh, it's been a pleasure, and we'll make sure we double back with you uh, on occasion just to to see where you're at and and get some updates from you. On uh, on where Bulidan has progressed to uh, as you move through um, your uh, your journey, that's great. So for everyone else, yep. um, I want to thank you for attending. Um, we will have, as I mentioned, this is a series, and so uh, keep uh, keep on checking on our website for um, for updates of when the next webinar series is. We know we have a few we're working on right now, uh, talking to. Uh, David and the folks over at uh, North American Palladium, we're just trying to work out a time for that one. Um, we've talked to Ken Schroeder from Epiroc. We may have uh, Ken on a future, uh, a future uh, webcast as well. And um, we're going to, uh, at the end of this, there will be a short survey. We'd just like to get some ideas for topics that you guys would like to see in future webinars. So we'd appreciate your feedback and we appreciate everyone for uh, attending our, our first of the Changing Minds webinar series. Thank you very much, and thank you again, Lars. Well, thank you. Great. Have a good day.